arrived in the Middle East, we were posted to the Reconnaissance OTU at Ismailia. And there we had a couple of flips on hurricanes and on Lysanders and learned how to do TACARs, that's tactical reconnaissance. And after a while, we were sent to the artillery school to learn how to direct artillery from the air. And that was quite a pleasant experience, but thankfully we never had to do it because you're just, you're just a sitter for anti-aircraft fire. Then we moved from there to Burgal Arab, still with only a couple of hurricanes, to await the arrival of our, of our hurricanes. We were told that they had arrived, but we'd have to go and fetch them from Takaradi. So off we all went to Takaradi. We arrived there, went to see the CO, and he said to us, he's not prepared to let us fly hurricanes with drop tanks right across Africa with so little experience. And that was a very sound decision because Dennis War and I were sitting on the beach watching a flight of hurricanes with drop tanks taking off over the sea and then turning onto their course. And suddenly we became aware of one of the hurricanes wasn't there. We didn't actually see it go into the sea, but it spun off when he was turning with the heavy drop tanks and the pilot was killed. So we were sent back with on ordinary aircraft back to Khartoum and from Khartoum by rail and river steamer up back to Cairo. And then we went back to the squadron and eventually we did get our hurricanes. Whilst we were waiting, we were at a camp waiting for the other pilots and the, all the ground crew to arrive to get the squadron going. And we had an Italian batman and he turned out to be a very nice chap and we had a whole group of Italian prisoners who were helping around the camp, helping us put up the tents. We had Italians doing the cooking and we got very good food. And we used to have chats with the uh, Batman and well, he, said, he seemed to know that they weren't going to win the war and said that when we went into Italy, southern Italy, he gave me his wife's address, not his wife, his mother's address, and said we should go and call on her and she would look after us. And then we, when we were about to move, they said that they'd like to come up with us. And we said, no ways, you'll try to escape. And they just thought this is the funniest thing they'd ever heard. No ways would they want to escape. We used to play soccer with them in the evening. They used to sing to us. And they actually did guard duty to stop thieving. So they were very useful and very nice, very nice bunch of chaps. You, you, the idea was to tell what troops were on the ground, what was on the roads, what was moving around, and um, just give a general report. Did it look like a large, large battalion or something moving up, or just scattered people? and try and assess the situation. And also it was important to see what sort of ACAC you were getting. Yeah, yeah. Because it gave an indication of, um, well, what armament they had. And then the other thing that we had to do, other than attack our, was photographic reconnaissance. You did that at a low altitude and um, with an oblique camera, so you, you weren't taking vertical pictures, or otherwise you did a high altitude um, photo run. You got into position, set on your course, set the cameras going, and then just held that course whilst the cameras were running and taking line overlap pictures. Oh, okay. 
and doing that you found that the sky was a very lonely place. Well, when we first started doing tacos, <coughs> excuse me, we were doing them at low level and that was really as low as you could possibly go. And of course the ACAC, we were, got a lot of ACAC with, with light machine gun fire and all the rest of the rifle fire, everything. And we had quite a few casualties and then they decided that this wasn't a good idea, that we should go up to about 3,000 or a little bit 3,000 feet or a bit higher where we were out of range of ordinary machine gun and rifle fire. But you were still in for the heavier, heavier ACAC, like Breeder and Bofors. And we still found that um, ACAC was quite a problem. But the other thing was that the enemy did not want reconnaissance. And they used to send out a group of usually three 109s looking for reconnaissance pilots, or reconnaissance aircraft. And um, if you did meet up with them, it wasn't, wasn't very good. It, um, you usually got shot down. We first of all had hurricanes and tomahawks. And none of us liked the tomahawks. We found they were heavy to handle and um, th th everything seemed different in the cockpit layout to hurricanes or other British aircraft. They also had a ten tendency to swing on landing. And um, this was quite a thing. Um, generally, we just didn't like them. And they also had this bad habit. If you opened the throttle too fast, it sheared the driver to the fuel pump. And the engine would cut once you just about got airborne. And we'd all been warned about this. But I can tell you then about Tommy Thompson. Tommy Thompson had been told about it, and we were all sitting in the mess when we heard this roar of the throttle being opened fast. It was his first flight on a Tomahawk. He had just returned to the squadron <coughs> after having been in Abyssinia. We all went outside from the mess because we knew what was going to happen. And he got up to, oh, I suppose about a hundred feet or so when the engine cut and he tried to turn round and with that he flipped over and spun into the ground. And we all watched this. It was awful to watch because he knew it was going to happen. And he was killed. The Hurricane was a lovely aeroplane to fly, no vices. It did exactly what you wanted. It was lovely to handle and I think we all just loved hurricanes, but the only problem was that they were very, very slow. Uh, slow in comparison to 109s. And if you did meet up with 109s, well, it, the hurricane didn't really shape terribly well. And that would be two of you, usually against three. It was a, a rainy, drizzly day, and there was very low cloud. And I was said to try and find out how far ahead the Germans and the Italians were. It meant going in underneath the cloud through the drizzle, but, and then the drizzle lifted and it was just very low, misty cloud. And I saw it, it, it had been quite a long way when I saw a truck on the ground. So I thought I'd just give it a burst, I'd have had a shot at it to see that my guns were all right. And this was a silly thing to do because it gave me away. And then I came on Bart Barchi Aerodrome and they knew that there was something coming. And I got a terrific lot of ACAC from them. And I turned and came round and went through a low part uh, 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 of, the, of the hills there and just as I came through, they were all on the other They'd heard all the gunfire and they opened up with a breeder gun.
You could hear the cluck, cluck, cluck. And the next minute there was a loud bang and the whole aeroplane shook. I didn't know where it had been hit and I thought, well, this is a fine thing. If I've been hit in the radiator and I've got to try and land in this hilly country, what do I do? And I don't want to, to climb up through the cloud and um, find then it's going to be difficult to come down through the cloud and see your altitude. And I was just praying that it hadn't been the radiator that had been hit. Well, nothing happened and I got back and then when I landed I realised what it was, that the tail wheel wasn't there because I could hear the dragging and the scraping and the tail wheel had been shot off. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we were at Marble Arch and we thought we weren't going to get our Christmas ration. Yeah. So a hurricane who cleaned out the wing, they took the guns out cleaned out the drop tax and sent Bert Welkermund down to Cairo to go and get rations. <laughs> the idea was he was going to fill the drop tanks with brandy and the gun ports with whiskey, bottles of whiskey. Well, he brought it back and um, the our local Cape Corps were given the job to start siphoning the brandy out of the drop tanks. So we didn't see many of them for the rest of the day. <laughs> and we were very fortunate here. We had an enormous amount of brandy, an enormous amount of whiskey. But the trouble was everybody around had heard about this, so we had lots of visitors. <laughs> and then a, a Dakota pitched up and told us that they'd brought up our Christmas rations. So now we had a bit of everything. So, so we were very popular for a while. Well, I, I can mention this business when the th three of us were left behind overnight. This was in the late afternoon. We'd hoped that they were going to get these hurricanes ready for us to take. They all, were, all needed something doing to them. But when it was obvious that they were not going to get them off um, whilst, whilst there was still daylight and um, we'd have to stay overnight and take them off at first light in the morning. In the meantime, th this was at City Aziz, the tank tanks were, you could hear the rumble in the distance and we were down on the aerodrome when an infantry officer came and said he thought we'd better all come up to one of the gun emplacements up there. This was an anti-aircraft gun that was dug in and um, s spent the night there. And then when he handed me a rifle and asked me if I knew how to use it, I felt like saying, I think I want to resign. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not infantry. And anyway, we got up the following morning and um, we had to take off at first light and they told us that as soon as you got airborne, to turn quickly, don't go keep keeping low, turn as soon as you've got enough speed to turn, because the tanks were right down at the far end, well, within range of the aerodrome now. And we turned and we all flew back down to Burgal Arab. And um, these aeroplanes weren't as good as they should be. I'm afraid all of us, all three of us, had incidents breaking our aeroplanes.